It is time for Garage Band Weekly. Let's do it. Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly. Whoa. Yes, it is uh, that time of the week for Garage Band Weekly here on Studio Live today. My name is Pete Johns. If it's your first time here, this is a show all about Garage Band, hence the title. And my goal on this channel is to help you create your best music. Create, record and release your best music. How many times have I said that? And I can't get it right. On the show today, we'll be looking at the woodwind sounds in Garage Band. Are they any good? Well, you can be the judge on that. I'm going to talk you through five different cool creators and things that they're doing in the garage band space that I think you're going to dig. And uh, we're going to take a look at uh, guitars, but using the keyboard in garage band, because why not? The guitar instrument's pretty cool in garage band, but it's a little bit limited, a little bit hard to do. Uh, welcome aboard. If you uh, would like to support the channel and uh, you like to learn garage band, uh, we are sponsored this week by my garage band beginner's guide. So if you need a garage band or you're just looking for a bit of a garage band tune up, then jump over to this website here, studiolivetoday.com slash courses, and you can sign up for the garage band iOS beginner's guide, five hours of hand-picked goodness from the videos that I've produced here on the channel. They're fully transcribed. They're in a bunch of different languages. There's a search box, as you can see there, and there's even a direct message option. So if you get totally stuck, you can hit me up and say, Pete, I'm stuck. How do I do this in GarageBand? And I'll be able to get back to you. Uh, let's jump in, shall we, to our first section, and that is our news and notes of the week. Now, Instead of news and notes this week, because let's be honest, there was literally nothing. There's one tiny piece of news, and that is that there was a garage band update for iOS. But guess what? It was bug fixes and stability improvements, which is never anything interesting. And I mentioned it last week anyway, but uh, what it did is it took away my uh, <laughs> took away my AUV3 plugins. All you have to do if that ever happens to you generally is to close all your apps, turn off your iPad or your iPhone, turn it back on and all of your AUV3, all your plugins should be back. If that doesn't work, there's an option that you can reset GarageBand. In fact, why don't I just show you that real quick here because it does happen from time to time. And uh, in case you've ever needed to do this, if you've reinstalled, if you've got the new update and you've just installed it, what you need to do here is come into your regular settings app here, scroll on down over here on the left until you find GarageBand, which is usually under G, that's where it usually hides. Go into GarageBand, and then if you scroll on down here, you'll notice that there's this option, Reset GarageBand. Now, don't do this unless you have to, but if you're finding you've got problems with GarageBand, it's crashing, it's not loading, it's got issues with your audio unit plugins, come here, select that one, when you restart GarageBand the next time, it'll go right back to that initial screen. Now, you don't need to, you won't lose any of your iCloud stuff, but you may need to come back in here and put things like note labels and iOS plugins and a few things back on because it will reset you to your default settings. And sometimes you do need to re-download your sound packs for some reason. I had to do that on my iPhone. It was a bit weird. So keep that in mind if you have updated and you're having issues. But uh, for the most part, on my iPad, it's been fine. It was only my iPhone that caused me problems. Uh, let's jump in because you, if you've looked at the description of this one already, you'll have noticed that, that that's it. There is no other news and notes. So what I thought I would do this week instead is actually go through five different creators that I love in the GarageBand space and uh, highlight some videos of theirs that you may not be aware of. And if you're not already following and subscribing to these people, you probably should. So uh, let's uh, let's jump in there without any further ado and uh, start with this one. Now, I mentioned this in the show in the last couple of weeks because our buddy, everyone's buddy, cool dude, uh, Mr. Ron Ward, is doing this show here. Look, I've got to give it a bit of a like. Let's set a reminder for myself and give this one a like already. He is doing GBU Live. He's doing a couple of versions a week. He's doing his GBU Live and his GBU Indie Live, basically playing a bunch of music created in GarageBand. And he hosts the show, goes for an hour, a couple of hours, and uh, it's just a great time. And because it's now here on YouTube, it makes it super accessible. So if you're part of the GarageBand users Facebook group, or even if you're not, you can jump over there. If you're not a Facebook fan, well, guess what? You can catch up with Ron and GarageBand. The GBU Live and the third edition is happening in just 37 hours time. That's Wednesday night for me here. That'll be Thursday in the wee hours. No, Tuesday. So, oh, Wednesday. <laughs> time is weird, man. 
But yeah, go, go and check that one out. It's down in the description. You can check that one out. Let's jump over here and talk about Mr. Dan Baker. Now, I haven't spoken about Dan Baker for a really long time. There he is. Look, he's got some exceptional looking lighting and cameras going on there. Dan, you've updated your, uh, your, your camera and your lighting game. Very, very cool. So this is a good one. This is a gain and recording. So if you're recording and you look and you're in GarageBand and you're like, oh, how do I set my gain? I've got my audio interface and then I've got the gain setting in GarageBand. What's the difference between gain and volume? Is there any difference? Guess what? Dan is the man who knows everything about everything musical. And it's just a little seven minute watch, but Dan goes through and explains a bunch of cool stuff. And uh, as, as his little header there says, I highly recommend you go over and subscribe to Dan's channel. Speaking of people for whom channels use should subscribe, uh, then this is a guy, and I've mentioned him before. You know him. If, you, if, you're, if you're a fan of this channel or if you've been watching the videos here and you're not already aware of Patrick over at the GarageBand Guide, you, I don't know. You've obviously blocked him or done something weird to, to cancel him. Cancel culture? No. Uh, but yeah, go to thegaragebandguide.com. And this one's pretty cool because this is his five best free plugins, his top five for 2021. Now, Patrick, it is only July. So he's really, you know, he's hemmed himself into a corner here. What if there's some amazing plugins that are released later in the year? Well, Patrick's a guy. He lives on the edge. He's going to take the risk. So uh, do jump over and check that one out. And the good thing about that one is that that's for your Mac stuff. Absolutely. And yes, I know, uh, Patrick has now copied my hairstyle. So this is why I'm recommending this video back when he used to have hair. Instead, he's gone all single white female on me and he started to, to look like me, which is a bit, uh, it's a bit creepy. Um, so yes, but do go and check. <laughs> Excuse me a moment. I'm getting all choked up over here. I think I use that joke every time. Uh, let's go to our next one. Uh, so this is our man, the man with the plan, Dean Davis. If you're not aware of Dean Davis, you should be. Check this one out. Uh, 407 likes, don't you mind? 10,000 views. This one's from earlier in the year, from April. But look at that. Dean's got his beautiful guitars on the wall. He's got his wonderful microphone. And in this one, he's... He's slumming it on the phone with us. He's gone, he's making beats on his iPhone. Dean does a lot of cool tutorials about GarageBand on Mac, on the song Writing Studio. He's been here on this channel. We've chatted before. He's an amazing dude and a great creator. And you need to go and check out Dean's stuff because um, especially if you're into sort of the pop music and the beat making scene, uh, Dean's your guy. He's, he's got you hooked up. So uh, you need to jump over there. Uh, yes, exactly. See, very single white female, isn't it, with, with Patrick and me? Uh, just, just remember, I I have no hair first. <laughs> I'm going to own it. Um, and last but not least, yes, it is uh, the one and only Jade Star. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Jade Star. Um, this one's a really cool one because Jade actually goes through how to create drum tracks using not your auto drummer, not Kyle. We kick Kyle to the curb, but how to actually program out your own drums right there in the MIDI drums, how to use the MIDI drum editor, how to quantize your drums, how to get them sounding good and how to make them pop without the use of your auto drummer. So if you've ever thought that, uh, you're, you know, that my drums are sounding a little bit weak and they don't really have, um, they don't really have enough unique sound to them. That's probably because, like me, you just chuck Anders or Kyle or, or um, who's, the, who's the lady one that I really like? I've forgotten her name. But you just chuck one of those on Leah. You chuck one of those on your GarageBand tracks and you go, done. Well, sometimes you just want to tweak things a bit. And don't forget, bonus tip, that you can actually convert drummer over to uh, drums tracks. So if you search out, so go watch that video. But then if you want to know how to do this, uh, drummer to drums, is this going to work? If you search my name, there you go. Search Pete John's drummer to drums. Uh, Binny, is it Binny Sandu? I think that gave us the idea to, of how to do this one. You can actually convert your drummer tracks. So you can start with a drummer and then you can actually convert it into MIDI drums like that. And then you can actually use those to your heart's content. Look, I'm wearing the same shirt. That's a little bit weird and inception-y, isn't it? <laughs> the blue couch is gone though. Uh, so yeah, so there's, there's five creators that you can check out. So just to uh, reiterate the people that you should be checking, you should be catching Rod Ward on GBU Live. You've got to get over to Dan Baker's channel. He's a delightful gent and has a lot of great information over there. And he's super smart when it comes to everything, but especially music and the theory side of music and the practical side of music and everything. Uh, check out Patrick over at the Garage Band. Gu oh, 
I thought I fired you. What was the name of my lawyer that I made up last time? Anyway, he, he did forbid me from doing accents, but I'm, uh, I'm going out. I'm being a rebel. Um, go check out Dean Davis at the Songwriting Studio. He is a wonderful dude and makes amazing stuff. And Jade Starr. Uh, whilst Jade doesn't use GarageBand all the time, when she does, it is worth watching. And of course watch all of her other stuff and all the other stuff produced by all those channels because they're all cool. Hello to the folks that we have here live. Before we jump into our next segment, I'm going to say g'day. I'm going to do it in reverse order because there's too many things here in the chat. Dr. Zorders, hello to you. Patrick Chandler, we've got Kim here. We've got Mark Thomas Christ. We've got uh, the Garage Band Guide himself, Mr. Patrick Baird. Hello to you. Audible Video, you're becoming more hypoallergenic. I'm not sure. Oh. Is that because I, I get it, these morning shows? I tell you, it's uh, it, it's not even it's not even springtime here. It's the middle of winter, but yeah, I do I do get that frog in my throat. And it's no fun. Uh, Joe Glenn, hello to you, Michael, aka Zealand Bam. We've got Russ eighty eight eighty nine. Uh, there's a bunch of other people. Brian's here, Gazzo's here. Uh, if I've missed you, I apologise. If you do have questions, Yoakum uh, Yoakum Fisher, great to see you here, my friend. Uh, if you uh, do have questions, all you need to do is put the word question in front of your question, and I'll try. Try to answer your question. Uh, I'm trying to find out the bit where I where I have that. Is it here? Where, 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 where? I have I have a little. Uh, uh, I've, I've got to clean these out. I've got all of these little um, banners that I can throw up here. Here, I'll use this one from the Creator Town Hall. There you go. If you have a question, simply put question in front of your comment, and then I'll be able to spot it as we go through the different sections because this show is interactive. Uh, so if you do have questions and you're here live, then you can ask them. If you're here on the replay. Please don't stress, don't worry, don't fret. Uh, you can just ask your question down in the comments. I answer at this stage every single one of them. There is going to become a time where I can't answer every single comment on every single video and I can't answer follow-up comment. Like I can't get into a two-way conversation because the time is just prohibitive. So if you've ever commented on a video and I've replied and then you've asked a follow-up question, you're like, man, that Pete guy is such a D-bag. He never responded to my response to his response. Yeah, I, I look at the, I basically go to all the new comments, I respond to them, and then you're kind of on your own. But if you want more help, especially with GarageBand stuff, jump over to the Facebook groups. You've got Create, Record, Release, which is more your generalist group. Go to createrecordrelease.com or the GarageBand Users Facebook group. Just search out GarageBand Users on Facebook. Join that group. A lot of the wonderful people that are here on this community and on this show and in this channel are over there and they can help you out if you need it. Righty dokey, let us crack on and load up some garage bands, shall we? Because we're going to do something fun here today, technology permitting. <laughs> so, uh, the we before we start this, I I plugged in, I, I set my things up, I airplayed over here to, to my screen, and I got this sound that just went like really loud static going through. And I thought, well, it's going to be one of those days, is it? And so I unplugged, I replugged in, I got it again. And I'm like, okay, so that's the sound when I'm airplaying. What about when I connect up my interface? I plugged in my interface and it went pristine and crystal clear. So I am crossing my fingers and my toes and I, I, I implore you to do the same at your end, that things will continue to function here today because you just never know with this technology stuff. If it doesn't work, if we go away for whatever reason, do just hang out because if, if we go blank for a minute or two, sometimes it's just that everything has crashed and then we just need to restart. So I'm just giving you that pre-warning. Uh, let's just do a quick audio check on here. Audio seems good. Levels seem good there. So we will jump in there. Jimmy Townsend, thank you for your question. I will try and get to that after I do this segment. I apologize. It's just, <laughs> it was a bit early. I could have answered it, but uh, hold that thought. Uh, and same with you, was up, Doc? Then um, hold those thoughts and I'll get to you after we do this section on Woodwind and Guzzo too. We've got questions coming in galore. So uh, yeah, please hold those. I'll try to get back to them and remember them there, but I may ask you to ask them again. <laughs> I know, I apologize. All right. Let's jump in here and get set up. We'll go to the keyboard here. Woodwind sounds here in GarageBand. Are they any good? How do you use them? Let's jump in and take a look. So we're here in GarageBand. We've gone to our keyboard instrument and we're going to tap on the more sounds button down here. This is going to give us all of our main categories, or in fact, you need to tap here to go back to the main categories here. And what you'll notice here is you've got your keyboards, your alchemy synth, your synth classics, your synth bass, your synth leads, your synth pads, your FX, and your other 
And it's the other that I want to point you towards because this is where a lot of cool sounds are actually hidden. And today we're looking at your woodwind, which is uh, going to include these, or well, wind in general, really, because the flute's not technically woodwind. But we're going to look at the flute, the clarinet, the oboe, and the bassoon because we're going to be able to create some cool sounds with these. Now, let's, let's do it like we would a regular track. So you'd normally start with like your bass instrument, you'd layer it up through some sort of pads, and then you put some melody over the top. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay down a bassoon track as our bass sound. We're then going to use oboe and clarinet to create a bit of a, a nice sort of harmony pad. And then the flute's going to do the heavy lifting at the top. And we're going to try and create ourselves a little, uh, a little ditty here. So we'll tap on bassoon, and you're going to get this one. There's your bassoon instrument. If we tap here... <laughs> It's actually a pretty nicely sampled sound. Now, the only controls we have here are your attack and your release. With something like this, you generally want your attack to be right on there, unless you're doing like a pad sound. Because if you put the attack up like this, maybe you want that effect. I tend to want, uh, if I'm doing like a bass sound, I want it to hit right on the bass. And the same with the release, I'll put that around the middle. So I don't tend to touch much of that, but you can adjust that if you want to. Now, like most of our instruments on here, we can play it as an individual note here, or we can tap on the chord strip and go into chords view, which is a little bit weird when you're using a single note instrument, like a monophonic instrument. So as opposed to other instruments that may be polyphonic, something like a bassoon is monophonic. But we can also use something called autoplay. Yeah, you know it's here. Autoplay. So if we wanted to tap on this one. That's a pretty cool one. Autoplay. I don't mind that. Maybe we can build something around that. With autoplay, don't forget that you can tap with one finger. Let's just, in some of these instruments, if you tap with two fingers, you get something different. Let's tap two fingers on there. No, it's the same. And what about three fingers? No. So in this case, with the bassoon, we've only got our four autoplays. So you've got one, two, three, four. You can choose a different one and you autoplay it. That one's not bad. We, we might use some of those more fancy autoplays for some of our other tunes. But let's just go with this one for now. And we're going to use a C chord because we're lazy. And we're going to make this in C. We can change it afterwards, but let's do it in C. So I'll, I'll extend this out because I actually want to do 16 bars with this one just to give us a little bit more room. So if you didn't know to change the number of bars, you just tap in the little plus button. It's a little bit hidden here. And then you can change the number of bars in each section. You can also add sections. If you want to learn more about sections and how to use them in GarageBand, plenty of videos here on the channel. Just search my name, Pete John's Sections, and uh, you'll be good to go. So let's, uh, let's set up here. We can record this now. I'm just going to record a little progression. I'm going to do a C... Let's do a C, F, G, A minor, C, or something like that. We'll make it up as we go along. So we'll hit record and hit C. Actually, let's go to G. And then let's go to A minor. And then F. So we've got C, G, A minor, F. It's a very simple chord progression. We just want to build out something here to demonstrate these. So it sounds pretty cool, yeah? Like your bassoon sound there. Now, like most things here, if we want to loop it across and do the same thing again for this one, we tap it and we loop it. And there you go. We've built out our nice... A nice little bottom end. And now we can build up on top of that. So that's, that's our bass, our bassoon bass here. We can then hit the plus button here. Let's add in another instrument. Let's go more sounds. We're going to go other. And let's add in an oboe. The oboe... I actually have used this in a few tracks in my song, Drinking With You. That has the oboe as a, as, as a sort of lead instrument playing a few little things in there. So um, so let's, let's play something in here now with... Something like that, I think. So I'm just going to make something up that goes with that chord progression and play it in manually this time. So you can build, you can use autoplay and then you can use something manual here to sort of uh, complement it. So we'll hit record and... That wasn't... Sorry, it didn't go to the A minor, it went to... The... Okay, I'll remember that this time. <laughs>
There we go. So we've built that out there. That's our second instrument. And it's really fun. Again, if you've never multi-tracked like this and just played around with different sounds, different melodies, different harmonies, it can be really, really interesting. So we're going to use this one. We're going to loop it out. And now we've got two different sounds there doing. <coughs> there you go. Now, one thing that you'll get into when you start recording manually is you may want to quantize your performance. So uh, what we do to do that is on the second one, we tap on our little mixer icon there. We come down to our track settings and we hit quantization, which is this one here. And we've got none on at the moment. If we put straight quantization, say we wanted to just put a little light bit of quantization, we do one sixteenth note. This is just gonna to nudge the start of these notes to the right position. So if we play it now. And you can hear there, it's actually put them a little bit off because this has sort of got a swing rhythm. So what I would actually do is I'd do it swing and I'd do a light swing quantization if I wanted to quantize this at all. So it sounds more in the pocket like this. Hear how that one hit more on the sound because it's not really hitting right on there. So that's, uh, that's how you quantize. If you're starting to do something like this with any sort of instruments and they're not sounding like they're in time or on the grid, you can quantize them up. Let's add our next instrument. We'll come in here. We'll go to our more sounds again. And this time we're going to use the clarinet. And now we're going to create this sort of counter melody to go with our... So because we started on a C, we're actually going to start on an E with our clarinet which is going to complete the going to complete that triad there. So I'm sorry I didn't I didn't say I didn't warn you that there'd be theory involved here today. So let's just record something in with this clarinet. So we'll hit the record button again and we'll play. I got the wrong key there. We'll try that one one more time. There you go. We've put a clarinet in there. We're creating something very unique here. A little bit of something. All right. So we've got that, our first eight bars. We're going to then loop those over again. So it's going to repeat through there. Now, there's one note in there that I wasn't particularly happy with. It was that second to last one. So what I'm going to do is tap on here and hit the edit button. Because, yeah, we can play this in. If you make a mistake, you don't have to do it all again. You can edit it. So I reckon it's this last note here. So let's just play this back and see what it sounds like all together. <laughs> so that note there, it kind of works with the chord, but I reckon, I reckon if we bring it down there, it's actually going to sound better. Let's just play this back now. And all you have to do to do that is tap it and drag it. So let's play this again. Yeah, I reckon I'm happy with that. Now what we can do, we can grab some flute. So our flute sounds really cool. So these, these sounds, again, they're all free. They're all here in GarageBand. And you don't have to use them all in every track, but you can see the power of this here that you might want to add in something to do a cool counter melody in something. So... Let's, let's do something up here with the flute. But let's just see if our autoplay is going to work with this now. So if we tap on our chord strip view and we go this number one autoplay that we did before, let's see what this is going to sound like. So yeah, we could use this one. Uh, or let's just try, if we go really wacky and go to number four, is this going to work in with our, with our arrangement? It might do. What about number three? Let's just try number three and see if it works in there. So we're going to hit record here. And again, all you need to do when you're using this is tap on each one of these and you need to tap it just before it hits the next bar. If you want to do a chord change, remember, don't do it right on the bar or it'll miss and it'll start playing the old note and then it'll try and change to the new note. So we'll try this now. We'll hit record and I'll try to remember the chord sequence. Oh. 
There you go. So that is our four wind instruments together here in GarageBand. That was a super quick demo here, just so that you could hear what they sound like, that they're actually pretty darn cool. And if you're using these to complement your tracks, then you're gonna get some good sounds here. The last thing I'll show here is that we can, of course, then mix these. So you may want to just make sure that, you know, some of those flute sounds were a little bit harsh there. And the cool thing is, if you're, if you're adding like a wind ensemble to a song, move it around. So what I'd probably do is I'd probably put the bassoon, like we'll just move this, we'll pan this one slightly to the left, we'll pan our oboe slightly to the right, we'll then grab our clarinet and push this one further to the left and grab our flute and push it further to the right. And if you're listening on a stereo speakers or headphones, then you can hit play on this one. <laughs> So yeah, you can create a pretty cool sort of stereo spectrum there with your instruments. And of course, like everything else, you can come into plugins and EQ, you can change your EQ, you can add plugins to add different effects and do everything there. But who would have thought that in your, on your phone or your iPad, you would have this sort of flexibility to have some free and pretty darn cool wind sounds in here. And don't forget that there's a heap of other sounds in there as well. If you come into your keyboard, you go to more sounds and you go down to other, uh, then you've got all of these. You've got your brass ensemble, your pizzicato strings, you've got a glockenspiel, you've got your world instruments, and you've even got guitars that you can play there on the keyboard. There you go. That is your strings. And uh, strings. <laughs> that is your wind. <laughs> I know. Uh, pe people have told me that uh, I'm full of hot air. And now you know it's true. Let's jump back in. And I will go back. I think the, the questions have probably been answered that were asked before, but I'm going to answer them anyway before I look at the answers. Because I, I made a call out for questions. And then I went in and talked about woodwind for, for 10 minutes. So we're going to come back and get back on track here. So Jimmy Townsend said, question, I don't have a room to record in a small house and my monitor situation is not good. Can I mix with headphones? And which would you suggest? Yes, you can. And I suggest these ones. <laughs> so look, there's a lot of different takes on this. Uh, I watched, um, actually I talked about it on the Creator Town Hall last week. Glenn Fricker from Spectre Sound Studios did a video recently and he's like, here's the things that mistakes that people make. And one of them was mixing on headphones. So I don't necessarily agree that you can't mix on headphones, but I do agree that it can make it more challenging. You do then have to reference your mixes on some speakers, whether it's just on your car speakers or your Bluetooth speakers or out in your home theater system, wherever it is, because you're not going to get the full representation of all of the different frequencies in most pairs of headphones. And sometimes in your headphones, it'll sound amazing. You then go and play it on some speakers that have got a bunch of bass and the bass is just way too loud. So you do need to be conscious of that. But once you learn your headphones and you learn the limitations and you learn what things sound like in a good pair of flat monitor headphones, then you'll be golden. So the headphones I recommend, as I said, are these ones, the HD 280 Pros from Sennheiser. If we uh, come down here, this is my studio gear guide. If you go to studiolivetoday.com slash gear, you can check this one out. And if you scroll on down there under headphones, blah, 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 it is these ones here. So you can go into Amazon and any of the countries you like there or into Sweetwater. And uh, if you make a purchase through these links, their uh, affiliate links, they'll break off a small chunk and send it my way. But this is these are the Sennheiser HD. 280 Pros. They are a beautifully flat, balanced, comfortable pair of headphones. I've got two pairs. In fact, these are my old ones that I use for live streaming when I'm doing mixing and, and mastering. I've got a newer pair. Uh, so you're like, Pete, you, you, you bring out the old stuff for us and you, you save the new ones for yourself. Yeah, I kind of do. <laughs> but because I don't, uh, like these ones are quite aged, but they're super comfy. And I don't need pristine audio reproduction when I'm doing this show. So the Sennheiser HD, HD 280 Pros are my go-to. Pretty much anything from Sony, from Audio-Technica, from, uh, who, who are the other ones? Who makes this? AKG. There's a bunch of different uh, manufacturers that all make good headphones, but you want monitor headphones. You don't want like Beats by Dre. You don't want any headphones that are going to color your sound, that are going to hype your bass. You want the sound to be as flat as possible so that your frequencies are balanced. You're not getting more of the treble or more of the bass in than's actually in the mix. Otherwise, as soon as you go and listen on something else, it's going to sound crappy. 
That's it. Uh, what's up, Doc? What's up with you, my friend? What iPad do I get right now? That is a great question, and uh, I'm going to point you over to my iPad guide, which is my iPad buyer's guide over at studiolivetoday.com slash iPad, where you can check out everything I have there. Now, I've just realized that I haven't updated this. Slack. Hang on, let me... Naughty. Uh, I haven't updated this with the new iPad Pro, mainly because it hasn't really changed anything that I recommend here. The only difference here, so I've got these ones here, so I've got my best all-rounders, which are those three, the iPad Pro, uh, tw sorry, the iPad 2020, the, the standard one, the iPad Pro 2nd Gen, or the iPad Mini 5th Gen. I've got your best budget, which is your Air 2, your 2019, or your Mini 4, and I've got the best performance, which is your iPad Air 2020, your iPad Pro 2018, or your iPad Pro 2020. So all you really need to do is swap out the 2018 with 2020 and put 20. 2021 in there for best performance. So, and, and I do need to update the complete guide that I've got here. I've got a comparison chart. You can see there it was last updated September last year. I need to get onto that and update it. But the only change that's been made since then is the new 2021 uh, iPad Pros, which have the M1 chip, which are really good. They're very overpowered in terms of what you may need. So you may not need all that processing power, but they do, they do do a really good job. Uh, but it really depends excuse me, it really depends on you and what you need for your recording. For instance, until I bought my current iPad, which is the iPad Pro 2020, I was using an iPad Air 2 and that was absolutely fine. Yes, I got optimizing performance, that annoying little pop-up sometimes, a bit more often than I do now, which is never. So that can be a bit frustrating. And yes, the performance, if I ran a lot of plugins, was not quite as snappy as it is on the iPad Pro. But if you're looking, depending on your budget, if you're looking to get into recording, I would just grab the standard iPad. The eighth generation iPad is really, really good. My daughter has one. It is amazing. It's got uh, the, is it the A12 chip that's in that thing? I should know this off the top of my head. But it's it's pretty cheap. It starts, it's like $329 and it really does punch above its weight. The iPad Air, fourth generation, the latest iPad Air is great. That has the USB-C connection and that has a lot of great power. And then the iPad Pro, either the 2018, 2020 or 2021, they all do a great job. They'll all run iOS 14 and into iOS 15. So they're all going to be compatible with all your latest software and you're going to be able to plug in all your stuff. The other thing to consider is whether you want a lightning based or a USB-C based iPad. So keep that in mind that the latest iPad Pros 2020, 2021 and your iPad Air 4 use a USB-C connector whereas all your other iPads use lightning. So if you've got lightning for your iPhone or if you've got a bunch of gear that uses lightning, you might want to consider that and stick with a lightning-based model. Otherwise, uh, your newer stuff is going to use USB-C. So uh, there you go. Uh, question from Gazo of Oz. Can I use some bits and pieces of guitar licks I'm working on for a song timber song. Yeah, absolutely. If you're not uh, familiar with song timber, song timber is the song song in a month challenge that we do here on Studio Live today. So every year on the 1st of September, I set the challenge. I start writing, creating, recording, mixing, mastering, and releasing one song in the month of September. We call it hashtag song timber just because it's fun, because why not? But what guys are saying here is, is it cheating to, to uh, do it beforehand, to have some ideas? No, the, the idea of song timber is to motivate and encourage you to get a song completed. I don't even really care if you've got a half finished song. Yes, technically the idea is to start from absolute scratch, but let's be honest, even when you start from scratch, you're probably using an idea that's in your head already. Uh, and even if you've just an idea that's in your head that you've recorded on your voice recorder, it's still an idea that's still a work in progress type thing. So yes, absolutely. Feel free to use whatever you've got going on uh, already. And yeah, as long as you can get yourself a sound, get yourself something out uh, in song timber because it's a lot of fun and you'll feel good about yourself for sure. Uh, I saw another, uh, oh, so, so you did put the budget there, say so $600 Canadian. Yeah, so for 600 Canadian, what I'd do is I'd get the iPad uh, eighth generation, I'd beef it up to with like uh, 128 or 256 storage and you'll be golden. You'll be good to go for many years to come. Or if you can pick up one of the one of the entry level iPad Air 4s, or for the 600 Canadian, you could get yourself a second hand 2018 or 2020 iPad Pro. If you really want the performance, you can go with that. I don't think, you know, you wouldn't be able to sneak into the iPad Pro 2021, even at the base level. And I wouldn't get the base model with the lowest amount of storage. Don't sacrifice your, that's why I was saying get the, get an iPad that has lower performance, but more storage because you're going to very quickly run out and if playing the shuffle game with iCloud Drive and uh, cloud storage, yeah, it can be a pain. Uh, 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, Patrick's got a great point here. I should have mentioned this when I was talking about the wind instruments. It is. It is uh, so weird that some of what I imagine are garage bands least used instruments are sampled so much better than the included guitar sound. I know. How nice is that oboe and that clarinet sample and the flute and the bassoon? And then you go to play a guitar and you're like, why does this sound like a MIDI guitar from 1994? Why? What's going on here? Why can't they just sample a couple of nice sounding guitars? It cannot be that hard, but apparently it is. Go figure. Uh, thank you, Mark. Yes, uh, so Mark sent you to the iPad guide, which I, which I promise I will update this week. But again, it's, it's all pretty much the same. Uh, Thomas Christ uses yeah uses the ATH thirties Audio Technicas so they're they're great as well and yeah the other stuff is over at your gear guy. Question from Kim Harden Hudson: Anyone ever tried one of those mic isolation shields to help with sound and bouncy off walls? Helpful or no? I haven't. I've spoken to people who have and they say they're not great. Uh, I guess it depends. If you're in a super super reflective environment with nothing soft around you and lots of parallel walls that are going to bounce things off of then yeah, it's probably going to do a better job. Is it going to be better than just hanging up some packing blankets or some curtains or some soft furnishings around you? Yeah, maybe a bit. So I, I would I would go the um I would go the low tech uh, the low cost version to start with, and that includes things like recording in a walk in robe, surrounded by like old coats and things that can work out really well. Make sure you're near some soft furnishings. I'm <laughs> in this room. I've now got a bed, and I've got two uh, curtains here, and I'm I'm facing into a corner, so I don't get a whole bunch in the way of reflections. You can hear that there's a little bit of reverberance in this room. But it's not actually too bad, especially if you're using a, you know, a microphone that, that just picks up directly in front like this one. It's a condenser mic, but it is a, a, a handheld condenser. So it's actually just, boop, it's a, it's a front address mic. So, yeah, I, 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 don't, I haven't personally tried them. They do look cool. And I've seen that, you know, the Facebook ads and the Instagram ads with the thing that goes around. And yeah, look, they're going to they're gonna stop some of your reflections. But to me, sometimes I think stuff like that is solving a problem that either doesn't exist or isn't really as bad as you think it is. Uh, unless you're finding your, your, your recordings are really echoey and reflective. When you solo it, it might sound a bit that way. Let's be honest, you're probably going to add reverb and delay and then mix it in with some compression and then have a bunch of other instruments. So are you really going to hear that at the end? And I know we're not, we're not going for mediocrity here in our recordings, but you also need to keep in mind that, yeah, we don't need the best and the greatest gear. Try the low-cost solution first. That's, that, that's my recommendation anyway. Uh, and a lot of other folks have had some uh, some recommendations there. Uh, hello, Mabe Ayub. Hello to John David John Lees. I hope you are doing well. Lonely Stoner, Loner Stoner, <laughs> Loner Stoner. Six six six. Hello there. Complete the triad. Yeah, no, I should have completed the triad when I was doing that. Uh, doing those wind instruments. All right, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here. So if you had a if you had one in between there, it's uh, I apologise. John David Lee says, this will be my first song timber. Welcome. Welcome to the fun times. Yeah. So, yeah. But by the way, song timber, it's not a competition. It's like there's no prizes. There's no, this one's better than that one. The prize is that if you get to, well, actually, there is one prize. I will buy your song. <laughs> if you release your song uh, on iTunes, I will buy a copy. Uh, so there's that. But apart from that, no, it's not a competition. It is just, if you get to the end and you've got a song, then you're done and you're good. Uh, Thomas saying that the iPad, first gen iPad Pro is still a good choice. Yeah, I've got a first gen iPad Pro kicking around. It's got a cracked screen now, sad cry, uh, but it is it is a good option because it's got the lightning connection. It has a headphone jack, which is super handy, actually, uh, So, and, but it's still got decent uh, processing power as well. Uh, right. Uh, let's see, have we got, there you go. Kim says, I'm facing a corner with fabric on one wall and regular wall on the other full. Yeah, so I think you'd probably be okay. Uh, the only thing, yeah, like I say, if you've got, um, so if you've got like a, one of those clothes hanging things that you can put a thick blanket over or something like that to put behind you, just to absorb it. What you, You're basically in a war against flat surfaces and you're a war against hard surfaces and parallel. So anything that is flat, hard and parallel, unfortunately, most of our rooms are boxes with four walls that are like drywall or something like that which is actually the worst thing it can be so what you can do is tilt yourself on an angle so that you're not getting a reflection bouncing straight back at you the reflections are bouncing off to the side so hopefully they don't come back into the microphone and most importantly is to make sure that behind you yeah there, there is there's something soft 
so you don't have that bouncing. Because the worst thing you can do is be parallel. So you sing out that way, it bounces back to the back of the microphone, which is not going to be too bad because your back of your mic's got a lot of sound rejection, but then it hits that wall and then it bounces back into the front over your shoulders. So that's the thing to keep in mind. If you can reduce the amount of reflection going on, then you're going to be good to go. Uh, Dom Fashion says, new versus you said before Apple punts uh, loads of models to their journalist reviewers for a couple of weeks, then they have to send it back. Those MacBooks, iPads can't be resold by Apple at full price. Yeah, the refurb stuff is actually pretty good. And especially if you buy it from Apple, you tend to get uh, the full warranty on it as well. So, and get Apple Care as well, then you're going to be totally covered. I don't get Apple Care on much, to be honest, and I've started regretting that. So, with my Apple Watch that I bought a couple of weeks ago, they were like, and do you want, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? For a watch, I'm going to get Apple Care because knowing me, I do a lot of walking and I'll just like walk into a wall or something and smash the front of this thing. And it's nice to know that if something like that happens, uh, I can take it in there and they're just going to re like fix it or replace it for me. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, as Dom says, yeah, exactly. Awesome as reconditioned and 30% cheaper at least. Yeah, do, do, do be in the lookout for that. Obviously, caveat emptor buy, beware if you're buying secondhand on somewhere like eBay or Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Because you don't know the history. You don't know that that iPad hasn't gone for a swim. You don't know that that iPad hasn't actually had a cracked screen and was repaired by dodgy screen repairers are us, and uh, therefore it may fall apart. So, yeah, not to not to fear anything, but yeah, if you buy from someone like Amazon uh, or even eBay with PayPal buyer protection, you're usually pretty protected. Um, or, yeah, but, but just at private sales where you just pay some dude two hundred dollars in an alley, um, yeah, you, you're protected in basically no way at all. So keep that in mind. Uh, uh, Laurie Jade says, question, are there any guitar sounds or other AUV programs that you would recommend? Here's the deal. For whatever reason on mobile, there really aren't. And I don't really know why. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of good, I've, I've said this before and I've complained about this before here on the channel. For whatever reason, we don't have them. Like if you go over, so if I go Creative Source, which is my buddy Mike, Creative Source Guitar Sim, he covers a lot of these ones. So there is really good, uh, oh, I've, see, I've not found it. I've got to do better with guitar, guitar plugin. Yeah, let's try a plugin. Oh, I'll find these. There you go. VST guitars. So Mike's got some videos here, some very popular videos about VST guitars. And VST is basically like AU, but for PC. So if you're using a PC door or something like Cakewalk by BandLab or Studio One or whatever, then you can use these VST plugins. And there's a heap of really cool guitars that have really realistic guitar sounds on your PC. And there's even some that have AU plugins for Mac. When it comes to mobile, we're left in the dark. And I don't know why it is. I don't know why we don't have decent guitar sounds. What I've started playing around with, and I haven't really built on this concept, uh, but I've got a video here with, where I show how you can make your own guitar loops, which is something... Oh, hey, guitar. oh I spelled my own name wrong. I spelled my own bloody name wrong. So I did this video a while ago, DIY guitar loops. So I show you... Look at that face. It's a shameful face. Uh, I show you how to actually create your own guitar loops by just recording your guitar in and then creating a loop of it. And as part of that, I did uh, include some of those loops here in the description. So if you come down here, you can actually jump over here to studiolivetoday.com slash loops and you can get loopy and download some of those sample loops that I did there. So feel free to jump over and check that one out and, uh, and maybe record your own loops or use some of mine that I've created. But yeah, someone needs to create, I know Jade's talked about this, someone needs to create an app that's like a chugga chugga app where you can just play cool metal guitars and rock guitars because it's really just a sample. As we've seen with the oboe and the flute here and as, as you know from the pianos and the other cool instruments you have in GarageBand, as soon as you sample something and then you can play it back, as long as you sample sort of every note, then you're going to be able to get a good sound. But I don't know. Uh, but yeah, the, the if you're playing a guitar, you can use something like Tonebridge. But yeah, if you're looking for a virtual guitar and someone can correct me if you've got an idea, I don't have, I don't have any recommendations. There really isn't anything uh, that uh, is good. Uh, yes, and exactly, reputation is all. Exactly. If you buy from Apple, if you buy from Amazon, if you buy from eBay, you're pretty much protected. If you buy privately, you do that at your own. reason it's much cheaper and it's more expensive to buy through Amazon or eBay or Apple is that, uh, yeah, you do get protected by that. Uh, question from Kinetic Music, and then we'll jump back over and uh, get into our final couple of sections. Uh, it says, question, would you say 64 gigabytes is enough for an iPad or iPhone? It's the absolute bare bones minimum, to be honest. I would always go 128 as a minimum these days, just because as soon as you're working with audio files, especially 24-bit, 24 24-bit, 24 uh, 24 44.1 kilohertz audio, 
as soon as, if you're recording real tracks, you'd need 128. If you're virtual tracks, so if you're creating beats and if you're using loops and if you're creating virtual instrument tracks, 64 is probably enough. Any, as soon as you're plugging in a guitar or a microphone and recording anything else, I would say go for um, go for at least 128. Uh, someone has mentioned uh, Geo Shred here. Yeah, Geo Shred is actually pretty good. If if you're gonna if you're gonna check out one, do check out Geo Shred because it's actually not bad. And um, if you want to learn about Geo Shred, jump over here to Jade Star. Just search Jade Star Geo Shred, and she has a whole video on uh, that, that's the Geo Shred virtual instruments. But I'm almost positive she did one on oh, there's MIDI Guitar Two. That's another one. Okay, so there are some. <laughs> uh, no, no, MIDI Guitar 2 is the other way around. That's using your guitar to play MIDI. Uh, but yeah, search for GeoShred. I think Doug at the Sound Test Room has done some. If we go here, Sound Test Room, GeoShred. Yeah, there you go. Let's play with GeoSwarm. And then, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a heap of videos there. So go and play with that. Maybe I need to, uh, maybe I need to check out GeoShred more myself. I haven't ever really played with it. I do have a version of it. I think I have GeoShred Shred Play. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Joe Glenn says, uh, that's what I have and it's not, especially if you do video as well. Yeah, you'll very quickly run out, especially if you're doing video, you'll very quickly run out of storage. Of course, you can use iCloud Drive, you can offload stuff to Google Drive, Dropbox, you can plug in USB drives, but yeah, I would future-proof yourself and plan to have a little bit more, uh, a little bit more than that, than 64, if you can, if, if you're, if you're, um, if your budget allows for it. I know, but, yeah. but I, I would, again, if you're, if you're between a pro with 64 or an air with 128, I'd go the air with 128 every day because you're going to get so frustrated running out of stuff. All right, let's jump in now to our rant of the week. So I need to come back here to my garage band for this one. So what is the difference between inter-app audio and audio unit V3 here in garage band? Well, it's subtle, but important. And the easiest way to show this is to actually show it. <laughs> so well, I've got my track here. I've just created this track. It's a little wooden wind track. It sounds like this. Very jaunty little ditty. And what we're going to do is I'll show you how we can add a piano using an external instrument. I'm going to use Ravenscroft 275. It's one of my favorite piano instruments. It's not cheap. There are other third-party plugins that you can use using the same method if you want to play around with it yourself. So we're going to come over here to external. And what you'll notice here is there's two options here. There's audio unit extensions and there's inter-app audio. Let's tap firstly on inter-app audio. And here's all of my inter-app audio plugins. I'm going to grab this one, the Ravenscroft 275, and it's going to bring up our instrument like this. We can play it. And we can record in. So what I'm going to do is record. Now, what you'll notice here is that we're not in GarageBand anymore. It's actually opened up this app, but we've got this little window here of GarageBand that's going to link us back to GarageBand. So if we want to record in here using this, uh, this app, we hit record there. It starts recording. When we're done... We stop it. And now if we want to go back to GarageBand, we tap on this GarageBand icon. And what you'll notice here is it's recorded in this sound. So it's pretty darn cool technology, yeah? You can see here it's grabbed this instrument. If we tap there, it takes us back to Ravenscroft. If we tap there, we go back to GarageBand. And if we tap on there, you can see it's saying, this is the interrupt audio that we're using. So it's basically using another app and then recording the sound from that app directly into GarageBand. Here's the downside. If you come here to your tracks view, what's going to happen is it's recording it as an audio file. So if we play this back here now, take a listen. So it's not bad, but did you notice that some of the timing on some of those notes was not exactly perfect? We can't fix that, or at least not easily, because there's no edit function in here. If we come in here, we can go to our settings, we can change a few things like the gain and the speed and the looping, but we can't actually edit that audio. So what do you do? Well, you can use another technology called AUV3 or audio unit plugin. And we do that by tapping here. And this time we're going to go audio unit extensions. You get a very similar sort of menu here with all of your AUV3. Now, keep in mind, some instruments are only interrupt audio and some are only AUV3 and some allow you to do both. That's why I'm using Ravenscroft here because it lets you use both. So we'll tap on Ravenscroft 275. Now, what you'll notice different here 
is instead of it loading the app, it's actually embedded the app right here inside inside GarageBand. So this time when we record, if we come back out to here, we'll just mute that first piano so that we're not playing this twice. We'll bring our other instruments back in here. And this time if we tap here to go back to our instrument, let's, let's record this one in here. So we hit record and... Now I played that really badly, yeah? You could tell that that was not a great performance there because it just wasn't in time and it didn't sound good. But here's the beauty part, because it's recorded in here as a virtual instrument, we can tap it and we can edit it. And look at this, we can actually edit any of the notes that we want here. So anytime I made a bit of a boo-boo or I'm out of time or whatever, I can actually edit those here using AUV3. If we play it back here now. So, da, da, I can change the position of that. I can do that. And some of these notes I didn't hit hard enough, like this one. I can change the velocity of that. Make it hit harder. So now... And we could even do, uh, do fancy things like quantizing. So if we come to here and we go up to our little icon there, we can go to track settings, quantization, let's go swing quantization, we'll do one eighth note uh, light swing. And now it's gonna line this back up on the grid and it should put it much closer to being in time with our original song. <laughs> You can hear then that the velocities I'd need to change around there. But that is the key difference here between your two types of external instruments here. Your audio unit allows you to record in as a green MIDI track that you can then edit, you can then transpose, you can then quantize to your heart's content. If using interrap audio, still works great, but you then don't have the ability to edit. So if you make a mistake with that one, you'd have to come in here and delete it and then re-record that one back in using the same method. So there you go. That's the difference between interrap audio and AUV3 for those who may have been interested. Uh, someone in the chat said, uh, is this a place for beginners? Yeah, uh, I like to think that we welcome all folks here. We definitely do some more basic beginner type things like we did with the, the woodwind instruments here today. We do some more complex things that we go into, which is some of the other tutorials that we do and some of the tips that we talk about um, and everything in between. So yeah, if you're a beginner, intermediate or advanced, I've, I do a lot of videos where I'll do something about, say, the, the strings that I did recently. And I got people that are like, Pete, I've been using GarageBand for four years and I had no idea that you could autoplay three different types on each one. So instead of four autoplays, they now have 12 of them to use. Uh, so yeah, I think we're, we, we try to cater for everyone, but I mean, you can't, you can't cater for everyone, <laughs> but we do try to cater for as many folks as possible. Uh, let's see if we have any, any other questions. Yes, Ravenscroft is great and House Mark is also quite nice and less expensive. Yeah, there's a lot of other ones. There's, um, what's the one that Jade showed the other day? that's a piano one I can't remember Tom might remember yeah the, there's a lot of cool different instruments that you can play around with but Ravens Crossed 275 is very very cool uh, on the space stuff yeah Thomas Christ talking about here that um, you can get two terabytes for ten dollars a month of iCloud Drive that is a, a great point I, I recommend that anyway even if you do get something with enough storage because don't forget you, the, the amount of storage you have and the safety of that is only as good as your ability to not lose it or break it <laughs> and uh, the the standard iCloud drive storage you get is 50 gigabytes someone correct me if I'm wrong but I think it's 50 and then you can upgrade to 200 and then you can go to two terabytes which is what I do but yeah 50 gigabytes that's not going to really be enough if you've got a 128 gigabyte iPad you can't even back up that one iPad with 50 gigabytes you need to upgrade so yes you're paying the Apple tax and yes evil blah 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 all that stuff corporation but what are you going to do? <laughs> really? I know. I, I get I get people coming in, come into the channel and they're like, oh, Apple are so bad. I can't believe you pay Apple. Don't you know how evil they are? I'm like, you show me another platform. You show me another thing that's this size that I can create music and edit videos on and I'll probably use it. And I know that people are like, but Android does support this and this and this and this. I just haven't found a consistent experience on any other device, including Android, that I get on iOS. And I don't love everything about it, but it lets me do what I want to do. Bottom line, though, is you do you, right? If you don't like it and you don't like the company and you don't like the products, don't use them. 
It's as simple as that. Scroll past. That's my, that's my motto of 2021. If more people just scrolled past instead of stopping and digging in when they don't agree with something, the world would be a better place. Because guess what? We don't all have to agree, but we do have to respect each other. And if you don't respect people, you're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> didn't know, didn't, didn't think that's where that was going, but uh, there you go. We're super low on time and I've got two extra segments. So uh, please let the affiliates know that uh, we are going to run late. Uh, Thomas says uh, Pure Piano and Pure Synth are good options too. And Jade's, uh, I think Jade's reviewed both. Yeah, I think so too. There you go. Exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. Dom, Dom says one of the joys here is watching people go from just starting then six months later, we're all like, what? Yeah, 100%. I, I love that too. That's why I love Song Temper because I've seen artists grow that, that have done it both years and I listened to their first track in 2019 and then their second track in 2020. I'm like, wow, this is you a year later. And it's why I, it's why I harp on about create, record, release so much and why releasing music is so important and pivotal to the process because it gives you like a time capsule. I, can, I was listening to some songs that I wrote in 2015 last night and look, they were fine. But they weren't what I want to produce now because I can see all the mistakes that I've made and I've learned from those along the ways and I don't make those mistakes now. If I'd never released anything, everything would probably still be at that mediocre level. Anyway, that, that, that's my thoughts on it. Uh, Seabar says, I'm currently uh, struggling to understand Beatmaker 3. Great door, but difficult to use. I'm the same. I've opened that thing once or twice and gone, Wah! and run scurried back to GarageBand. So uh, that's why, that's my that's my talk. Uh, Lotus Dota says, do you have any videos on how to use the plugins and EQ as it's confusing to know what each of them does on the track? I, I have a heap of them here. Uh, so in fact, I reckon... Do I have a playlist of them? I think if you go Pete John's plugins, again, YouTube is your friend. It's the second biggest search engine in the world. So um, do use it. So there you go. Plugins, this one here, this is a 13 minute video and I'm pretty sure that this links you off to a bunch of other videos, but this shows you the absolute basics, how to add them, what each one of them does. And then if you want to, any of the plugins that have a name, you can just put in here. So if you wanted to go, uh, what's one? So Pete John's Garage Band. Garage Band Delay, or no, it's called the Echo, isn't it? So you can go through each of the plugins, and I've got a video, there you go, on each one of those. So how to use it, what it does, all the different settings on there, Pete John's Reverb, uh, Garage Band Reverb. So yeah, just search, go to, go to your YouTube, use it like Google, and search out, and you'll find a heap of videos right here on the channel. Then you'll be good to go go there you go exactly right <laughs> exactly right i've got uh, over oh, i haven't even counted them lately but i think at last count close to 2000 videos in total here and i reckon at least 12 or 1300 of them are on garage band and pretty much every topic you can uh, you can think of that's what we've tried to do anyway we 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 who are we it's me <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no one behind the scenes here, apart from like my wife and daughters who do support me in many ways here with the channel. But there is no we; it's it, it's me. I'm not, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go down the we path. <laughs> let's getting way off track here. Let's jump back on track here, and uh, and we'll, we'll delete out these pianos because they really didn't work for us. We'll delete that one. Uh, but let's go with our tip of the week, and we're gonna do this. Uh, we're gonna jump over here. And grab a guitar. We were talking about guitars before, which is quite uh, quite interesting. So, the guitars here in GarageBand, despite not sounding super awesome, are fun to play. And you can play them in chords view or notes view. But unless you know your way around a fretboard, it can be a bit intimidating. What if there was a way to, instead of using the guitar view here for your guitars, or the bass view for your basses, you could use a keyboard view instead? Well, that's what we're going to show you right here, right now. So let's go back out to our track view. We showed you there how we can select the guitar, but we don't want to do it that way. We're going to delete that one. And we didn't want an acoustic. We actually want an electric guitar here. So let's uh, let's hit the plus button here. And instead of guitar, what we're going to do, we're going to scroll on across and we're going to go to our keyboard and hit more sounds. Now here in more sounds, you've got your alchemy synth there that you can go into. You've got keyboards, which you'd probably be aware of. If you've got the keyboard collection, you've got a heap of keyboards in there. You've got all your alchemy synth and and your synth sounds that you can use. But if you scroll all the way down, and sometimes it's hidden, so sometimes you've actually got to scroll over here on the left and tap on your other, 
you're going to get all these. And guess what? A lot of our instruments that you have to play using the bass or the guitar are right here to be played using the keyboard. So for this one, in fact, I've changed my mind. I was going to go with a hard rock guitar. I actually want a bass guitar. I want to get a P bass to go with my cool little woodwind sound here because a P bass sounds cool, right? Yeah. And the cool part about this is you can even come over here and use... You can use these and autoplay. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use autoplay because I already know my, my chord sequence here and I want to record a bass sound over the top of this. So instead of coming in and having to use the guitar, in fact, you know, I won't use autoplay because that's kind of cheating because you can do that in the guitar anyway. But let's say I wanted to do a custom bass line but I don't want to use the bass guitar interface. I can just use the keyboard. So let's, um, let's do this now, shall we? We'll hit record and we'll record in some bass. Is that the base, 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 base? Is that the best bass line I've ever created? No, but it's a good example of what we can do here. So there is our bass there, and it's exactly the same now. We can come in here and we can edit it and we can change it. We can adjust the notes. We can do all the cool things. We actually get more control here now than we do of our bass guitar. One of the big benefits of this is a lot of folks, when they come in here and they start playing guitar in GarageBand, they realize that you're actually limited here. If we come to guitar and we go more sounds and we go to, say, the Roots Rock, you're limited with how many frets you have based on the size of your device. So I've got an 11-inch iPad here, and I've got, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 frets. If you've got a smaller iPhone, it may only be 8 frets. If you've got a 12-inch iPad, it might be 12 frets. But you can't get any higher than here. And any lower than a low E because it's based around the actual guitar. So if we play it there, and yeah, you get the cool things like your string bends and your slides and your hammer-ons, which you can... So if you want to use that sort of stuff, that's cool. But for a lot of us, we're just recording in parts that we don't want anything like that. So if instead of using that, we hit the plus button here and this time we go back to our keyboards and go into our other and our, where is it, the Roots Rock? The same thing here. So there's that uh, low E. But guess what? Because we can scroll down here, we can actually drop, put it into like a drop C tuning. And we can go all the way up here. There you go. And even better than that, I'm pretty sure, even though you can't go higher than that here when you're recording, I'm pretty sure once you go into your... Um, Edit. Because we're playing it right here in your keyboard sound, once you edit it, I'm almost positive, correct me if I'm wrong, GarageBand, but we can now grab this and we've got more range. Yeah, we can. So there it is. So now we can actually bring this even higher. <laughs> and even lower. Yeah, okay, so we can't go past C1. But yeah, you can go anywhere from C1 right up to, what, C6 or 7. So you get the full range of the keyboard as opposed to just the range of the guitar. So it's kind of cool. It's a cool way here to actually record in bass. I use this a lot for your bass sounds because as fun as it is to see that real bass guitar when you're recording or that real guitar like this, it gets a bit fiddly trying to... Try to play it right here on the screen when you can just use the keyboard instead. So there you go. There's your tip of the week. Use your keyboards. And uh, you would have noticed in there that there's a bunch of others that you can use too. So if you go to the others, other instruments, you've got like your upright bass. You can use the Guzeng and the Koto, uh, especially things like the Erhu and the Piper. <laughs> Those things are really hard to play uh, when you're trying to play them in the actual instrument. Fun, but really hard to get the sounds that you want to. So keep that in mind if you're recording here in Garage Band. We are over time, so we better move on. And uh, let's uh, let's take a look at let's take a look at our plugin of the week. I'm going to show you this really quickly here because um, it's one that I've showed before, but it's free and it's cool. So let's take a look at it now.
Stereo Lag Time is a very cool plugin. It does one thing and it does it really well. If you go to your plugins and EQ and we hit edit here and we hit the plus button, go to audio unit extensions and guess what? It said, Pete, you've had enough. You've had enough time, son. We're going to turn you off. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. it said, yeah, you look, you've had an hour. It's, it's good. Um, you're done. All right, I'm going to try and reshare my screen and see if we can pick up where we left off. It might do that weird noise thing again or it might just kick me off entirely. Hopefully neither of the above. There you go, we're back. We need to now unplug the, the uh, cable here, plug back in, because what what basically happens is when you when you screen share like this using, um, using uh, what is it called, AirPlay, it'll go through AirPlay and then it overrides any audio that you have. So what I've done is I've unplugged and plugged back in, and now hopefully if we hit play, fingers crossed, we're back. So things are cool. So let's look at stereo lag time. It's a free plugin and it's really cool. So we'll come in here to audio unit extensions. We'll scroll on down and we'll grab stereo lag. So what stereo lag does is it does a, a version of, if you've ever seen, if you've ever heard that tip where you grab a track and then you put it on a second track slightly delayed and you kind of get this sort of stereo sound because one, sort of, one you put on the left, one you put on the right, slightly after the other one. It takes a bit of kajiggling, but you get this nice thick sound. Well, guess what? Stereo Lag Time does that all for you. So if we've got this bass sound, for instance, and uh, that we just played in. That's cool. It's right up the middle, but it could sound a bit thicker, yeah. So we've got the Stereo Lag here. What we can do at the moment, it's off. We can actually push it right by a number of samples or left by a number of samples. And yes, it'll make it slightly off-centered, but it does actually thicken it up. So let's show you what this, what we mean with this. I'll, uh, I'll play it back and we'll just push it right by, like, say, 27 samples. Take a listen. As we push it further, you hear it widening out. And now you can hear that it's playing the left one a long way before. So 190 milliseconds, which is like, yeah, it's, it's a it's really hearable amount of time. Hearable? It's a quarter of a second. So you can go right up to a quarter of a second, 250 milliseconds there, and that will really make it sound interesting. And you can go the other way as well. So you can uh, go this way. So it's a cool little plug-in, and uh, it's similar to Wider. So a combination of stereo lag time and Wider can give you some really funky and freaky sounds. In fact, let's uh, let's show you this in a different track here. We'll go to something that's got some uh, some vocals, shall we? So we'll come out of here and we'll go into my completed songs, and we'll grab. Uh, what, what should we do? Let's let's go. Oh. Uh, that's what I was doing. I was trying to find what I was doing before. There we go. We'll go into Hold On, and this is my version of Hold On that we can play around with. So if we go in here to my vocals, which is not that one or that one. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> These are my vocals. You can hear it sounds like this. Life is long and you have much time. So using this plugin on vocal like this can actually be super cool because we can come in here and we can add it and go Stereo Lag. And it just will add a bit of thickness to this plugin, to this uh, vocal that can really work in the mix. So we'll bring this back into the mix. Sounds like this. You're in a rush and you don't know why. So let's grab this plugin now and we'll push this. We'll do it uh, like eh, maybe about 100 samples just so that you can hear a bit of the difference. You want it all and you want it now, but you doubt your talent and you so that's a bit of an exaggeration, but if you only did it by, like, say, maybe 10 samples, it just thickens it up. Take a listen. Have much time. You're in a rush and you don't know why. But if you go too far, it starts sounding super weird. You want it all and you want it now, but you doubt your doubt. However, that can actually work for, for say, a um, something that you want to... Uh, like really accentuate. So for instance, in this part here, where it goes into our chorus, maybe we would want it to do something weird like that. So let's just pump this up all the way and see what it would sound like coming into here. So that's way too much, right? But yeah, you can see what I mean here. You can use it as an effect just sometimes. 
and use subtly, it can actually really add to your sound. So we'll remove it from there or I'm going to get super confused as to why I put it on there. But stereo lag time, again, I love a plugin that's free, that just does a thing and that does it really, really well. Okay, we are nearly here at the end, so I'm just going to check out and uh, do one final check. If you do have any final questions, I can sneak another five minutes in here, so uh, please do drop them here, and we'll do some quick fire Q&A if you have anything to ask. Uh, Joe says, good tip, going to try that. That's the keyboards uh, with the, the guitars. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's that. Uh, must know you're over time. I know, I'm totally over time, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll finish up here in a minute. Uh, I'll just scroll down and make sure that everything has been covered and we have no outstanding questions. Uh, I don't think so. I think we might be good. I think we might be fine. Seba uh, says on Mac, I also try Bit Bitwig Studio 8-track full version. Uh, nine, 299 euros. Yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's a good one. Wider and stereo lag time. If you're looking for simple free plugins that are going to really help, especially on things like vocals and guitars, then uh, yeah, wider and uh, stereo lag time is uh, a very good options. Uh, final question from Oscar. Oscar, what should I have for dinner? Burgers. It's always burgers. No, uh, Thai food. H has anyone ever eaten Thai food, eaten a delicious pad Thai and then gone, no, I regret that? No, you don't. That's because Thai food is amazing. So go and have some delicious Thai noodles and uh, you'll be happy with that. <laughs> for me, I'm going to go have a coffee because this one's become way too cold. But thank you again for being here and uh, thank you. Oh, we got one, one final question. All right, we'll sneak it in. French fries. Yeah, delicious. One final question. Uh, my Bluetooth keyboard doesn't work properly in GarageBand. I think it might be because it's old. Uh, I feel it should still work. It's a Logitech ultra thin keyboard cover. How can I get it to work? I have a full video. If you search Pete John's mouse keyboard, there's a full video where I cover all the different ways to connect USB and Bluetooth misses and keyboards. So uh, yeah, just so that we don't hold people up here, just go search Pete John's keyboard mouse and you should find that one there. What was I saying? Oh yes, I was saying this, that uh, if you are starting out with GarageBand or if you're a beginner or if you're an intermediate user, or maybe you're an expert user and you just want to uh, make sure that you know everything that you need to know to get the best out of GarageBand, do indeed jump over here to studiolivetoday.com slash courses that is going to take you to this page and for just ten dollars you can get five hours of completely curated content that I've created just for you all about GarageBand right here so that is studiolivetoday.com slash courses and uh, you can check that one out there is a link down in the description if you want to check that one out and you'll be supporting me and the channel here and helping keep the lights on here at Studio Live today that is it that is it for our live shows for this weekend. I hope you had a good one. I hope you have a great week of creating coming up. We've got a bunch of other things uh, happening around the channel. We've got some tutorial videos coming out. I'm diving back into GarageBand on the Mac, so that should be a heck of a lot of fun. And uh, we've got some gear reviews and things coming up over the next week. So do not fear, I will still be here. And uh, we will, of course, when, you, when this finishes, it will take you to Your Music Live episode 58. So set a reminder for that one. That's happening next Friday. 2 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. No, the other way around. 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, uh, 10 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. And if you've got a song that you want to submit to that, studiolivetoday.com slash YML. Thank you for being here. Thank you, ball boys. Thank you, ball girls. Uh, please, be kind to yourselves this week. You, you need to, a bit of self-love, a bit of self-care. Be kind to other people because no one wants to be a dick. And uh, keep creating. Thanks, folks. See you soon. Bye for now.